How's it going, everyone? The OP Leprechaun here. Welcome back to another episode. Well, between this episode and the last, I think I finally managed to figure out the audio quality issues. We'll see how she goes today. Um, I know on the last video when I was caving, it was very, very grainy when I was in the dark. So I'm going to work on that this episode around and see what I can't come up with for a solution. So at the end of last episode, I talked about the fact that I wanted to turn this little overhang of death here into a farm. So I think we're going to work on that today. We're going to hop in the house here real quick. Uh, I do finally have enough mutton to make it worth at least a piece of coal or two. And I'll get those cooking up. All right. We're going to go up top here, and I'm going to flatten this area out, as well as give myself a better access to it than running all the way over here every time I want to get up here. Now, normally I wouldn't do something like this, you know, just because, and it doesn't really need to be here, but I like the overhang, I like the overall look of the area, but I gotta do something to keep drop creepers and things like that from falling on my head. So if I'm gonna have to put a fence up here anyways, I might as well utilize the space and have myself a little wheat farm, because that's the only thing I have easy access to is wheat seeds, which I can pop over there to the plains and break a bunch of grass and get seeds for it. So I am gonna do this for a few minutes. I'm gonna flatten this out. I don't really think anyone's going to care to watch that whole thing. So, I'll be right back. So, I've got everything level on this. We are going to just replace this layer of stone with a layer of dirt so I can get a wheat farm going up here. Uh, for anyone who hasn't watched my channel before, my name is the OP Leprechaun. Or, you can call me Ryan. Uh, I am playing... Minecraft Bedrock, because I don't have Java, uh, and because I, like a lot of Bedrock players, kind of get left in the dark on a lot of things that don't necessarily work from Java to Bedrock, and so I kind of thought this would be a fun little way of maybe getting some people who know more about this game than me, which is, you know, nearly everyone, and kind of start getting a little baby community going about just bedrock and what we can do on it versus what uh, you can do on Java. So, I am calling myself, I guess you could say it's, I'm the, I need a little more dirt, so we're going to go over here and level this out just a little bit more too. Just so I can get uh, enough dirt to finish out what I started over there. Get some snow in the mix, apparently. There's just a hair of terraforming here. Yeah, there's more than I needed, but that's alright, because that'll let me plug that little hole over there. Alright. So... I am playing on hard, straight-up survival, no cheats, no creative placement, no flying around or teleporting. Uh, I'm playing on hard because we Bedrock players don't have access to hardcore. Uh, I know that's extremely popular these days, and I would love to play on hardcore, but it's just not a thing that we have access to. Alright, so we're going to go right here with our water. I'm going to put a little half slab over top of it. That way you don't fall into the water. I do not have... I do not have a hoe yet. Nor do I have any seeds. So, I think what we're going to do right now is I'm going to get this back in my inventory. I'm going to clean up my inventory real quick. And then we're going to head over to the plains biome. And we're going to see what we can find 
proceeds. So I started doing these videos. This is episode number three of my first Minecraft Let's Play. Uh, I am the gamer dad. Uh, I started playing this game because my kids wanted to play and I had never played it. So when they were, first off, asking me if they could get it, and second off, <laughs> asking me how to play, <laughs> I had absolutely no help to give them. So I started playing it and have become ridiculously addicted to this game, and now I play it as much, if not more, than they do. So what we decided to do with that is, since I'm going to be playing anyways... I decided to start making some of my own videos because I do watch, you know, quite a few YouTubers uh, about Minecraft and there's a few exceptions here and there, uh, but primarily what you find for Minecraft YouTubers is Java players. So I am going to be playing solely in Bedrock for now. I'm sure at some point I will get Java and get a computer that can run Java and record these videos at the same time, which I can't even record my Bedrock videos <laughs> and record at the same time with one computer. I am recording on a laptop while I play on an all-in-one. So, the struggles that I have... Ooh, surface lava, another little cave. Uh, our last little caving session went pretty well, but... I really want to get my wheat farm started. So, why does it do that every once in a while? You know, sometimes it spreads out like crazy. Sometimes it does one stream. All right. So, I have talked before about the fact that I am not going to try to rush and get diamonds and diamond everything and max enchanting and all that stuff right away now i am going to get diamonds when i find diamonds and i will craft them into tools i will craft them into armor i'm not saying i refuse to use diamonds i just enjoy it's a lot easier to find iron it's a lot easier to replace iron so what I find myself doing a lot of times is using mid-tier enchantments. You know, 5 or 10 bookshelves instead of the full 15 on the enchantment table. How many seeds do I have? Nine. Yeah, I need a few more than that to get going here. Because I don't have a whole lot of bones for bone meal. So I'll just keep breaking grass and seeing what we can come up with. So what I like to do is get 5 or 10 bookshelves for my enchanting table. And then from there... I like to enchant a lot of iron tools, because you can get Efficiency 4, Fortune 3, Silk Touch, the whole gamut on iron. And those mid-tier enchantments sometimes only cost you two or three levels as long as you're, you know, above the, the 10 or 12 or 20 levels that you need to make those enchantments. So what I do is I spend a lot of my time with enchanted iron and anvils and what i can do is i can repeatedly repair those iron enchanted tools at very low cost and then once they get to the point where it's like you know 17 levels or whatever to repair it on the anvil up to full i just don't i will just use it till it breaks and then i will make a new one to replace it and i find that for me to be a lot more efficient than constantly going for diamonds because diamonds are fairly rare. And so, yeah, they, they have a much higher durability and they break things faster than iron. This is true. But, you know, when you have an efficiency for iron pickaxe, it's pretty darn fast. And it takes a lot less effort to replace it. I mean, I have to go back and look in my chest, but I'm pretty sure I already have close to a stack of iron just from one mining session yesterday. So that is how I have a tendency to play this game. So I definitely want to get enchanting going fairly soon. Uh, to do that, I will need some diamonds because I do need to make a diamond pickaxe and get some obsidian. 
That is, without a doubt, a requirement. But after that, we'll see. I mean, I, I'm i totally fine with just playing the game and getting my goals accomplished. Oh, we have an ice spikes biome over here. Okay, now that's cool. Oh, and I'm about to run out of daylight, so... What I'm going to do here is I brought a travel bed with me, because I knew I might be out here for a little while, because I've only got 14 seats, and I really do need to get a few more before I head back and plant. So I'm going to put my bed down, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to adjust my POV just a little bit. And we are going to get a really, really cool screenshot of an ice biome. Right next to, uh, I don't know how that's going to look in the dark. So I'm going to sleep real quick. Too far away. Don't ever try to play in that POV. It's really, really awkward. But let's see if I can get a slightly better screenshot of that ice biome. Well, and see, there's another thing that's really going to be cool. Okay. POV. Gone. Uh... A lot of times I wouldn't be able to access those blocks until I get Silk Touch. And that's always going to be the case, but I can get Silk Touch on an Iron Pickaxe with Efficiency 3 or Efficiency 4 much faster than I can get it on a Diamond Pickaxe. So I don't want to wait around to get my enchantments till I have enough diamonds to do that. I will probably... I will probably get a lot more diamonds going towards my armor before I do it towards tools and weapons. Because, you know, again, while I'm not playing hardcore, I really would like to stay alive. Well, there's plenty of cows over here, so that bodes well for me, because I do... The, the, the main goal, besides getting, you know, bread out of wheat, is to get a cow farm going. And I was kind of worried, because over in the spruce, you don't see as many cows. However, there are plenty over in this plains burgeoning into taiga. So... Shouldn't be too much of an issue. What do we got over here? The other thing I'd really like to find is a village nearby. I don't know how much luck I'm going to have with that. You do see Plains Villages all over the place, and Taiga Villages. So, after I get my wheat farm going here, I might go do a little exploring today. Build myself a boat. That might be... How many seeds? I've got 15 seeds. All right, so on my way back, I'm going to break more grass if it works. See, again, someone's got to explain to me why. Sometimes it does. I mean, there was nothing there to block that little corner. Why did it not send the water everywhere? All right. See if we can get one to work this time. There we go. Seeds, seeds, come on. You know there's more seeds than that in there. All right. I don't need any more wool for the moment. Maybe eventually. You know, if I can get some shepherds and get a little wheat farm going, that's actually a really good way to make some emeralds and get some better trades later on. All right. So, yeah, I think that's definitely a plan for today, is to travel around this taiga, or this plains, for a little bit longer. Try and get about 30 or so seeds. If I could do that, I have a pretty good chance of filling up at least half of that little farm before I log in. Someone's going to have to explain water physics to me someday. All right. So you can see we're in a region over here where I did come and harvest some trees off camera when I was trying to get some more wood for texturing that house and... Not all of them have grown back yet. If you've never tried the whole water bucket for clearing grass, it's actually a really, really convenient way to do it when it works. And sometimes it doesn't work, and you're just better off 
breaking it anyways. But it's <laughs> proves my point there. I get some grass there. I really don't get <laughs> All right. It's supposed to be quite a bit faster to go through, and instead of breaking all these by hand, to go through and break that with water. But we're going to see. Where are we at? Got 24. So if I can get 30, I think I'm going to call that a good start. What would be more convenient is if I could find a village and <coughs> borrow their hay bales. Ah, that would be really, really convenient, and I think it's something that I'm going to look for. So... I'm going to keep wandering around. And I will come back to you when I have enough seeds. All right, there we go. We got a half a stack of seeds, and I think that'll be plenty. And there are donkeys over here still. There's that ice biome off in the distance. I think that's going to be really cool. I can make an ice highway. I hear skeletons. What's down there? Oh, I almost want to go just for the bone meal. Okay, I do have full iron armor. If I can just find a couple of skeletons real quick. Hey, there you are. All right, there's a couple of skeletons. Okay. Is there more than one? Not looking like it handily. I was kind of hoping there might be a few hanging right there. But that was not the case, and then I fall down a hole. Alright. Let's get a little light going in here. No, but I will take some iron. Because we are going to need more iron at some point. So, once I get started here, I am, my, my plan for the start of this is not to live in that starter house forever, hence the name Starter House. Uh, I have never built a modern house, so that's, ooh, yep, we don't need no, yeah, we don't need that fall on me. Okay, let's get out of this little hole in the ground here. Uh, I've never built a modern house, uh, so that is something that I would actually really enjoy, and I have one picked out that I saw a real-life modern house that I thought would be replicable in Minecraft. All right. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Because that's not my house, is it? And if it is, I'm seeing it from a very, very... Oh, yeah, no, that is my house. Wow. It looks a lot bigger from a distance. For a second there, I thought that was a village, and I was in a random spot that I hadn't been to yet. But now I realize that, no, it's just my house from a different angle and it's about to be dark and I don't think I'm going to make it back there before mobs will spawn so I'm just going to sleep real quick dang I really got my hopes up there for a minute I was all like oh yay look at all that I don't have to travel and look for a village now but yeah not so lucky all right so we are going to oh there's drowned there's quite a few drowned over there all right we're going to go over here and head up the waterfall because that's kind of, you know, one of the more fun ways to get up to my house. Sure, find the one gap in there. Here we go. All right. So I only got those two bones. That's all I got. I think I have one or two more in my chest in the house there. But I think... What, oh, I need to make a hoe. I see you, llama. Need to make a hoe before I do anything else. Uh, actually, I can get some of that iron going in the furnace. Ooh, I have the rest of that mutton. I only have a couple of iron. That's all right. Uh, that chest should have my iron in it. Okay, so I don't have quite a stack but I do have several so I think oh no I do I make an iron hoe do I make a stone hoe that is the question um, 
Right. I think I'm gonna stick with an iron hoe or a stone hoe at the beginning here because I don't actually plan on spending too much time farming right now. Eventually, once I start building my home up on the mountain there, I think it's gonna be that mountain. I'm not sure yet. But I am going to need an iron hoe at some point. I just think it would be kind of a waste right now. Alright, so let's one, two, three, four. And that's five. You can Okay, I need to add a couple of dirt blocks there. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go down one because I don't want them just supported by one. Because that is kind of tacky. All right. All right. Let's see if I have to expand this any farther. New, no, I think. We might when we put the fence up there, but I think we'll be all right. Went one too far. Yeah, I'll have to. For the fence expansion, I will, but we're going to. Ignore that for right now, and we're just going to get this tilled. I don't actually need to till the whole thing because I don't have enough seeds to till the whole thing, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right, so let's get some seeds in our hand. Now, something that I've been told on several other videos, and I don't know how true it is, some people say... That splitting up your planting and doing it sporadically helps them grow faster. And some people swear that planting them in rows is the way to do it. Something with the RNG and, and the way the ticks work is if you just go in straight rows as much as possible, they will grow faster. I don't really know. I'm just going to go out on a limb and go like this. <laughs> All right, I got a few more pieces of dirt here. We can make it just a little bit bigger for when I do put a fence up. All right. Change the terraforming just a touch right here. Yeah, that'll work. All right, one more right there because it just looks a little less awkward that way. Let the grass grow, let the wheat grow. And I think we should do a little bit of exploring. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm going to get this dirt block out of here. I'm going to clean out my inventory a little bit, and I'll be right back with you. All right. So here's the last couple pieces of iron. I am going to put, I grabbed some pork chops while I was over in the plains biome. I'm going to put that in the furnace. And while we're doing that, I am going to repair this axe. And I'm going to repair, not the axe again, the shovel. All right. And I look up in my mob drop box and I did have one more bone. I don't have another bow, so I'm actually going to put my used tools up here with my blocks. Uh, I'm going to put those pork chops back in there. I'm going to eat those up, and then I'll eat up the chicken and then the mutton, because I have the most of the mutton. All right, so I'm going to grab just a couple more pieces of iron just to make her 15. I need to eat. And then I'm going to turn this couple things into bone meal here just to see if I can get a few more wheat planted while that pork is cooking. And hey, cow appeared. I don't have a pen. I don't have any wheat. All right. We can get cows. That's that's not seeming to be an issue. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to spam the wheat here. It's not going to get me much. That's, I mean, we know this. It's not going to get me much. But it's going to get me a couple more squares filled in while I am 
Did I really only get four seeds for that? Man, normally you get like two seeds per. Well, that was kind of a waste of bone meal. I could have used it on the tree farm or something else to... Uh, that's kind of vaguely disappointing. All right, well, I'm not going to make any bread out of that wheat. I'm going to store that wheat for now so that when we do have cows available, I can get them interested in following me to a pen. Uh, I'm going to make some more spruce planks. While that's cooking up. All right, then I'm going to make a boat. And to do that, you need a wood shovel first. And from there, you can make a boat. So now I got a boat, I got wood, I got some sticks. I don't think I'm going to need any of that. Alright, so now I've got pork, I got chicken, I got mutton. I got a boat. Let's go for, let's go for a little boat ride. Now, I don't know if I have easy access to that ocean. Yes, I do. Straight across. That will be good. So while I'm over here running towards an ocean and heading off towards distant lands and who knows where, hoping we find a village sometime soon, maybe in this desert over here. Desert villages can be really, really good or really, really bad. Um, while I'm headed that direction, if there's anything you want to see me do, anything that I'm doing just horribly, horribly wrong, please drop a comment. Let me know. I mean, I'm, I'm so wide open to suggestions, it's not even funny. I really want to learn more about playing this game. And I really do enjoy playing this game, so if I can get some new ideas, get some new... Is that not a desert? There's lots of die-offs. See if there's a shipwreck. Oh, looks like the sun's going to be going down soon. Okay, so this is... Is this not a desert after all? Oh, that kind of stinks. I was really looking forward to it being a desert. All right. I'm going to come over here. Hello, dolphins. I don't have any fish for to feed you. All right. Give me somewhere where I can throw it on a bed here. All right. So I'm going to sleep real quick. And then we're going to continue adventuring in the morning. All right. Good morning, everybody. All right. Take the bed. Let's get back on the road. That kind of stinks. I was I really thought this was a desert over here when I saw it from the uh, distance from where we first spawned, but it looks like it is just taiga on the edge of the ocean. Well, that doesn't mean we won't find an ocean, or a desert, I mean. Uh, we do have some ocean ruins over here. I am not ready to face some drown with tridents just yet. I didn't even make an iron sword yet because, you know, I have a perfectly good one and a half stone sword still, and I will just pick my battles. All right, so there is Taiga over here. So the chances for a village is not totally gone. Ooh, that looks like it actually could still be desert. Let's look. I don't see any trees popping up. So maybe we didn't completely luck out after all, and there really is a desert over here. Which I would be thoroughly enthused by. If it's not a full desert, it's at least a desert island, so I will take it. I've had a lot of luck in desert villages. So let's see if we can find a desert village. Desert villages are really cool places to get cartographers because you can literally just mine sand and set up an auto smelter and just sell glass pane after glass pane after glass pane. And it's really, really fun. So, all right. So, good. I, I do have a desert. I'm not going to fall in that hole. Thank you very much. 
Desert villages are also really, really fun to convert into like giant desert metropolises. All the different sandstones and all that kind of stuff is really, really easy to come by. Because you just dig down to the sand end and oh look, there's sandstone. So, desert temple. Let's see if we can find one. Huh? There's a well. Well, leads us towards village, right? Right? Right, I hope so. <laughs> I see a village. That makes it very, very convenient. Is it on this side of the river? No, it is not. All right. So then at some point, a bridge might be necessary, or we just build a dock over here. Hello, Runny Babbitt. Let us see what we have in this village. Well, it's not abandoned. There is an iron golem. It's always a good sign. What do we have? Oh, we got a crafting table. Hey, I think a green bed for a leprechaun is a much better idea, don't you? I think so. All right, so we're going to... Borrow that bed and make... Ooh, yeah. This this is what I was really hoping for. Is there anything that breaks those faster? No. They break about the same, but at least I might use enough durability. I was really hoping to find some hay bales. That will make it so much faster to get my cows. All right. Little upstairs. Little upstairs. What do we got? Hey, there's a chest hiding up here. All right, I'll take some more wheat. I will take some bread, supplement my food. Clay, I got. I can get plenty of clay by my house. There's that whole swamp over there. One tower, two towers. I bet you there's another treasure chest in the other tower. So we'll go look. And I can go down spiral stairs the wrong way. I swear I can. It's always so much easier when they go the other direction. That's the other tower. What's in this house? Just another green bed. Desert villages are apparently really fond of green beds. And another chest. Come on. It's got to be here. There we go. Ah, more bread. Uh, bum, 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 bum. You know what? I am going to take the cactus. Because worst case scenario, if I cannot find a spawner anytime soon, I can set up an auto cactus farm and get some XP that way. It always amuses me to see deserts right by ice biomes. Because that's an even bigger ice spike biome. Holy cow. Oh, oh, we got carrots. We got potatoes. Yay! That means I can start getting other food crops for eating and trading. That'll make my day really, really happy. All right. Hang on a second while I grab another screenshot. All right. That's done. I have my coordinates. I have my screenshot. Um... We're only about a thousand blocks away from home, so it's actually surprising that we went that far that fast, but that's about where we're at. Here's one complaint about Bedrock that is kind of annoying. So I know in Java, ooh, smoker, that is mine. Now I don't have to build one. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Do I need a pickaxe for that? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. So, the one thing about Bedrock that seems to be a little bit sketchy compared to Java is the Nether. It's a lot harder to get a Nether Hub going in Bedrock. Now, I don't know if that was a result of the Nether update or exactly what, but what happens is, is if you build your second Nether portal just a touch too close to your old nether portal you come out at the same one you can't you know i can't i'm too close right now if i built another portal back at my home base that way and then i built one in the nether here matching coordinates they are too close so anytime i go into the nether portal it's just going to pop me back out at my home base rather than coming here so that leaves either doing a 
railroad over here or a tunnel over here or something pedestrian like that, at least until I get Elytra. But that is not going to happen anytime soon because I'm, you know, not very good at this game yet and have not been to the end. All right. What do we have? Ooh, what do we have here? Huh? Ooh, we have a cleric. Hmm. 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 Okay. I think I'm going to leave him alone. And how much does he... How many pieces of rotten flesh? 32. Okay. Don't have that much yet. But there are some there. There's some more bread here. And some gold. Uh... I've never really been into potions all that much, so finding a cleric that's already in an established town, I really like that idea. Alright, I'm not going to take all their carrots, because I'm, I'm not a total jerk. But I am going to take some of them, just like I'm going to take some potatoes. Oh no, that's sweet, dang it. See, you gotta look before you leap. You really do. Alright, so I'm gonna put my new fancy green bed down. And I'm gonna sleep. Alright, good morning. We are going to pick that back up. And I'm gonna explore the rest of this town. Because I don't think that I actually have hit... Oh, there's a cheap in that house. Oh, they have looms. Huh, I've never really done anything with looms before. I don't think that weavers usually have sheep in their bedrooms. Cauldrons. That means that there's a leather worker around here somewhere. And it kind of looks like there's a cave over here somewhere. Hello, kitty. All right. We'll go back up top here. Pretty sure there's still a few buildings that I have got to. I'd really like to find a desert temple and see what they have in the treasure chest at the bottoms of that. All right. Okay. Pretty sure. Yep, because that's the cleric. That's a farmer. What's he? Uh, beetroots. No, I'll wait for a different trade on him. We don't need no stinking beetroots. They're not good for much else. All right, so that's the whole desert village. Okay, I came in from that side. Uh, I'm going to go out of town. Well, just for cuz. Why is it not letting me ring the bell? <laughs> oh, yep, see, there is the leather worker there. All right, so there's the ice. Ooh, more carrots. Did not mean to fall down there. All right, more carrots, more sheeps. Let's go venturing in the desert a little farther. And we will see what we can find. All right, so this does appear to be a desert island. I don't know if it's a straight up island or if it's a peninsula attached to another mainland. So we're going to get back on the other side of the river. And we're going to go find out. This is where I wish I had... Horses are the best when it comes to desert. Cause, man, trying to get through a dark oak forest with a horse. It just is no bueno. Not whatsoever. But coming through the desert? Ooh, you can make a lot of ground up in a hurry. All right. I think that is that same ravine. Hmm. Here's my question. Nope, I'm going to do explore. I'm like, all right, here's my question. Do I want to go look in that ravine and see if there's anything interesting at the bottom? Because I wouldn't mind finding an abandoned mine shaft. It's been a while since I found one of those. But I really want to keep exploring. And I did find a village that I can work with. I'd like for it to be a little closer to the house, but... You know, beggars can't be choosers when you're in an infinite world and you pick a random seat. So, we're going to keep meandering. I think this is just a straight-up desert island. 
which, you know, could be cool. Thankfully, there is the one village on there, so it's not a complete waste of a desert, but I will have to get some cartographers going over in there and get a get a city wall and defend that town and keep the mobs away from it so that I can actually be there without endangering it. So I'm not going to pick up those sugarcane because there are sugarcane real close to me back at the home base. And I really would like to keep my inventory a little bit low while I'm out here doing my little, you know, where in the world is anything useful running through trip. All right. Uh, just so I don't accidentally do that to myself when I wake up because that would really be unfortunate. All right. It is getting dark. I don't think it's dark yet. At least not dark enough to let me sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I've pretty much covered this island. I don't remember. Did I go over there or not? It's very, very hard to tell. They are kind of featureless, you know, deserts. So one thing you can almost guarantee is that if you find a desert... Oh, haha! <laughs> like, why can't I run? Why can't I run? Why can't I run? That would be why. I wore myself completely out of hunger. All right, let's get some pork down in the hot bar. All right. So, as I was saying... Uh, you are extremely likely to find desert villages near rivers that cut through desert biomes. In case <laughs> it wasn't obvious to anyone back there. Alright. I cannot tell if this is the direction that I came from, but I kind of think it is. Oh, there's a big, another big case. Just, oh man, these are all just waiting to fall out from under me. I hate those kind. Is that turtles or no cactus? I say, you're a little far from shore there, turtle. Uh, let's see. There is more desert, so maybe this is a peninsula and it's not the direction I came from. Which would be cool. Haven't seen any man made structures except that one village. And floating. Grass, no, not grass, uh, sand. Yes, sandstone, even. <laughs> uh, I've commented before how uh, much fun it is to talk through all this. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Mm, there are some nifty, nifty looking caves over here. All right. That's really pretty. I like when the water switches over to green. Now, I th think that's the color of the water in savanna. So we might be headed towards a savanna over here on this edge of the desert, which would be cool, too. I don't have any acacia. I will, unfortunately, run into a whole bunch more llamas, if that's true. But it doesn't look like it. It looks like just a one-block-deep pond. Okay, then. Lots of caves over here. How many of those caves are going to fall out from under me as I walk across the sand? All right, I'm going to keep meandering a little bit, and I'll get back with you if I find something cool or interesting. Well, I was coming to the edge of a desert, just not into a savanna. Or maybe it is a savanna. But it looks like taiga. That is most definitely taiga and plains. All right. Continuing in the desert. Because I haven't found a desert temple yet, and I really want to. Okay. I'm going to pick up this bed. I got here just as it went night last night. Anybody want to tell me what that is? In the middle of a desert? Some random... Oh, oh, you know what I think this is? 
this is part of an abandoned... This is the littlest, tiniest piece of abandoned portal I have ever seen in... <laughs> what the heck? What is going... Okay, is it is it like completely buried in sand? Is there more obsidian down there? <laughs> what is all... This is weird. Uh, for those of you who are Java players, uh, you know, I don't know if they ever actually added these back, or not back, but into Java in the first place. I know a couple of the folks that I watch uh, had never seen one before and were real excited when they were going to do an RTX on Bedrock and see their first abandoned portal. Well, this looks like I have found one, but it is the weirdest one I've ever seen. I don't normally find them just completely... Yeah, this is absolutely an abandoned portal. Man, do I wish I... There's usually a chest. Okay, when you find these, there is usually a chest somewhere. So if there's a buried chest, there very well might be. Abandoned portals usually have some really good loot or some really janky, useless stuff. It all depends on... Wow, I, I've never seen one buried in sand like that before. That's really cool. Alright, I am not seeing a chest. But I did get the gold block, which is cool. My inventory is getting a little full. Uh, is there anything that I want to get rid of? Not right now. Uh, nope, I think for the moment I am just going to leave it where I'm at. And I'm going to continue exploring this desert, because, you know, why not? It looks really, really cool when you see the biome change. I would like to see a savanna. Actually, you know what I would really love to find someday is a mesa. I'm told that they actually do still exist in Pedrock, but I can never find one. And I mean, I, I, have, I have copied my seed, not for this world, but for other worlds. I have copied my seed and made it a creative world and then gone nuts flying around trying to find one. It, I, I don't... Is that a temple? I think that's a temple. It's either a temple or another village. Either way, I believe it's a temple, though. But yeah, I would really like to find a mesa and get some mesa biome stuff. I've never even seen one, much less taking stuff out of one. Alright, so we finally found a desert temple. So I kind of feel like after this we can head back to the house. And since I have some wheat, next episode we can get some cows penned up and start working towards getting our enchanting going. All right, I'm definitely going to eat before I venture down into this bad boy because I don't need to not be able to heal. All right, get some pork chops going. All right, let's go visit the desert temple. All right, there's usually a set. Nope, this one is oh, Enderman. Don't pay me no mind. I don't want to talk to you. You don't need to talk to me. All right. I'm just going to fall down there. Okay. Here's the thing about desert temples. If you are completely new, even newer than me, and totally unaware of what's going on in this, um, don't step in the blue thing. <laughs> uh, that is a trap, and you will fall all the way down. And then when you do fall down, you will land on that pressure plate. Now, you don't want to do that because underneath that pressure plate is a whole bunch of TNT. So that is the fun part about raiding desert temples is not springing the trap. And you get some free TNT. Hey, this one goes into a cave. Well, isn't that fun? Yeah, it could be. Let's see, is there anything that goes into a really... Ooh, 
goes into a really deep cave, and I see... I think I see lava down there. Mm-hmm. We are definitely going to be visiting this place again. All right. So right now, I am going to focus on getting the treasures out of this temple. And then we might call it an episode right here instead of going back to the house. But we will just have to see. All right. I'm going to get rid of all this TNT. Because I don't need to blow up. All right. I need to pick something to get rid of. Well, here, I can make a spot right there by combining those together. Uh, I don't need a stone pressure plate. I don't need one crack. There we go. Now I can get the rest of that TNT up in here. And we could actually have our first diamonds here because, well, we do get a saddle. That is that is something that I'm really enthused about, is that saddle absolutely is going to come with us. Uh, gunpowder. Uh, I don't need any iron bars. That isn't going to take up any more space than it already is. I can make stone brick slabs. I can make stone brick. So I don't need, honestly, to keep any of those. All right. Let's see what's in this one. All right, I am going to collect some more rotten flesh since we do have a cleric in that town. I'm not going to take a second saddle or a third because I really... Hey, diamonds! Diamonds are our friend. All right. Okay. So we're going to get rid of stone brick. I'm going to take some diamond horse armor. Unbreaking, knockback one, power one. That's not a great book. Uh, well, I don't, I don't, I can get sand anywhere. I don't need to keep that. I'm almost to making an emerald from that guy. All right, one more chest. Hey, we have enough for a diamond pickaxe now. Now I can make an enchanting table. Power three. Okay. Okay. I'll take power three. Um, <laughs> uh, stone brick stair can go away. All right, we got some more gunpowder. We'll get some more gold. Ba, ba, ba. Then my inventory is pretty packed. All right, I'll leave the cobblestone, lose some sandstone down in here, and I'm going to go like that. All right. So I think... I really think we're going to call it an episode right here because I... Hmm... Maybe, maybe not. All right. Let me get my coordinates here, and I'm going to see what is going to be the fastest way for me to get back and get back to here, because I think it would be a waste not to go into this cave, because it looks like it's a really deep one. All right. Let me find my coordinates. Let me find my way out to some daylight here. And I will get back with you when I have made... This one must be completely buried. All right. So, we're going to get to daylight. Oh, right there, we're going to get to daylight. <laughs> I can figure this out, I swear I can. All right. Daylight, here we come. All right. All right, we're back at daylight, and I am going to call it a day right here. And we'll pick up the next episode right where we left off, because it is nighttime. And I'm going to camp out on top of a desert temple. And we will pick up exactly where we left off on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Leave any suggestions or comments or questions in the comments below. Thanks. Bye.